the Park Lane Hotel is one of the most important assets that you've ever bought. Mm -hmm. And you had big plans for it. Uh, mm -hmm. They didn't quite come to pass. Right. Was it the scandal that really threw everything off with, uh, with Joe Lowe and the 1MDB money laundering scandal, which became a global scandal, but, but it all came back to this property. I think it's been featured everywhere in television, front page of the New York Times. Yes. Uh, did you, were you actually going to go through with that plan to build condos there? Oh, sure. We were all geared up to do it. Uh -huh. um, and, um, you know, I was quoted. There was a story recently about it, and I was quoted in, in the New York Times mm -hmm. of Charles Bagley's story. Mm -hmm. And I said, I think my quote was something along the lines of, we woke up and were faced with these circumstances mm -hmm. that we couldn't imagine would ever happen. Mm -hmm. Of course, who could imagine right. we, it would ever happen? Right. Now, Joe Lowe hasn't been accused of a crime. Sure. He's, it's, it's, it's right now a civil action, mm -hmm. so I don't want to comment on that side of it. Mm -hmm. But a civil action that involves a money laundering complaint and a kleptocracy complaint essentially meant that we were frozen. Mm -hmm. And so it had to get resolved. Would you, you regret that deal, the way it, it, the way it all came to pass? Because that would have been, I believe that would have been your most ambitious condo project by far, right? You know, I don't regret, I don't think we made a mistake there. Okay. I think we would, it was a well-conceived project. Mm -hmm. um, but when you, when you got this partner involved, how much vetting happened? How much due oh diligence? Gosh, we were, we were, we vetted him like we would vet any other partner. Mm -hmm. We did a background check. We called up people he did business with. He was being banked by Goldman Sachs. He had done business with the Blackstone Group. Um, all of this, all of the lenders in our, in the lending stack, KYC them, which is mm -hmm. uh, commonly sure. referred to as a know your customer mm -hmm. report. So everybody, everybody who was involved in this handled themselves responsibly. Okay. One IMD, which was the Sovereign Wealth Fund, mm -hmm in Malaysia that everybody talks about mm -hmm. had then just finished a bond offering through Goldman Sachs. Right. They were, I mean, they were blue chip as blue chip as it comes. And that's right? how we had read it. Right. And so we'd like to think that we responded responsibly, okay. ran the property correctly, did what we were supposed to do, managed it for, managed it correctly. And, mm -hmm. and I think we have a solid asset today. One of the things you mentioned before, uh, you've talked about this before this whole scandal really blew up on, on the park lane, which is, uh, you had second thoughts about launching sales or moving forward with uh, the redevelopment of the condos at the time. Did you see something in the market that gave you pause, or was this already a function of troubles that were going on with uh, with Joe? Mm -hmm. Not really. No, we had remember we had sold 150 Charles. We mm -hmm. had sold it in 12 weeks, and that did very well. I believe is one of the yeah. most successful projects downtown. Yeah, we sold it at significantly north of mm -hmm. what our pro forma was. We then came into the market on 10 Madison Square Park West, mm -hmm. sold it significantly north of what the market was. Are you sold out at that building? By both buildings. Okay. And then we came into the market with 111 mm -hmm. uh, Murray with the Fishers, and we were we had a pretty high velocity of sale, uh, mm -hmm. high rate of sale. It's probably the best selling uh, property in downtown Manhattan. Where are you today. at now in terms of sales? Uh, in and around 75 percent okay. in that sort of range. There's a real market out there. Mm -hmm.